To be a Green Lantern means to have within you an immeasurable amount of will. Willpower that can make you overcome any obstacle, or will that can split the sky in two. Now there are many Green Lanterns who hold within them the sheer power that is will itself, like Jon Stewart, Guy Gardner, Kyle Rayner, and my personal favorite Green Lantern being Hal Jordan, as he's literally constructed his own Green Lantern ring from his will alone. Hal Jordan has also gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with General Zod, souped up on two suns, which is crazy, and at one point even decimated the entire Green Lantern Corps himself after going insane in the Emerald Twilight storyline. And if you thought that was all Hal Jordan's done, you'd be dead wrong, because Hal Jordan once became the God of Light itself. Now this all took place during a wacky event called Darkseid War, where the Justice League members all became gods. Darkseid died, then came back as baby Darkseid. Superman also became the most powerful being in the galaxy, capable of wiping the floor with Goku, but chose to harass diners for apple pie. And Batman sat on the most amazing massage chair from Bernie and Phil's. The chair was so good, he also found out that the Joker was three people. Ooh. Now, during this event, after Darkseid had died, his mother box controlling his parademons set a crash course for Oa, the brightest place in the galaxy. And upon arriving to Oa, it wouldn't take long for the parademons to wipe the floor with the Lantern Corps, pretty much only leaving Hal Jordan as the last line of defense against the parademon army and the extinction of the Lantern Corps. As we start the story with the mother box asking different defeated lanterns if they will be its new god, with every Green Lantern refusing the mother box's will, while one by one with each refusal subjecting the lanterns still alive and kicking to become parademons themselves. Oa now in complete ruin and the Guardians defeated, there's no other hope for Oa than Hal Jordan, as Hal Jordan is seen flying through the galaxy faster than ever to try and help his comrades in battle. However, while flying to Oa, Hal Jordan recalls a distant memory from his childhood. Entering a church by himself, unsure of what he's supposed to do, as a man asks Hal if he needs help. Hal then begins to tell the man that his mother told him to enter the church and to light a candle for his father after dying in a jet accident. To which the man realizes the boy in front of him is the son of Martin Jordan as he begins to say that it was a shame he died and that he wishes he could have flown with the man that could cut the sky open. Hal then asks the man if he knows which candle he's supposed to light because his father never really took him to church because in his father's opinion it was sort of a waste of time because God couldn't help his father while flying a jet. As Hal then says that if God were real in the first place, why would he just let his father die in the jet crash? Why not just lend down his hand and save his father? Asking the man, isn't that what gods are supposed to do? Cut to the present, Hal Jordan is seen fighting off Kilowog, now a parademon. As Hal Jordan takes Kilowog out with a nasty sucker punch, he then asks his ring how many more parademons are on Oa to find out that there's exactly 1,102,000 parademons left and there's just one of him. Hearing this, Hal attempts to figure out a way to stop the parademons and save his friends. While Hal fights off more and more of his friends now changed into parademons, discovering from his power ring that the mother box is like a ring itself and whoever possesses the mother box can stop the parademons. Figuring out that the mother box is looking for a new beholder. Back to the past in the church, Hal lights the candle and the man beside him starts to say that the candle is like another light in the dark. And that it's almost like the flame is reaching for something and that it looks pretty as Hal begins to cry, grabbing the candle, throwing it to the ground in a fit of rage. Hal then yells that the flame isn't pretty, and that it's all just stupid. That God just let his father die. God should have saved his father and let him live another day to cut into the sky, but instead he just watched him burn just like Hal had to. Cut to the present, Hal Jordan fights off an ocean of parademons by himself. Even when the odds are stacked against his favor, he still has the will to keep fighting, as his ring tells him he's doomed to fail. But Hal just tells his ring to just shut up and keep counting how many more parademons are left to go, killing dozens and dozens, never wavering, until Hal Jordan is ultimately consumed by the abyss of parademons. Consumed by oblivion, Hal flashes back to the church again to the man telling the younger Hal that God watched just like Hal did, but God has no other their choice than to watch because he had to. But what sets God apart from the two of them is that God's work is necessary and always has to be. God has to be who he is. God has to do what he does. But not the two of them because they both have something God doesn't. And what that is, is free will. The free will God gave the two of them. As the man says to Hal that he never knew his father, but he could tell he flew without fear, all sky. And to fly like that, you have to trust in that will, to love that will even knowing that whatever happens, you're the one on the line, and that this is your world. You get to choose, and God gets to watch. Lighting another candle, the man says he's been up, all the way up, and has seen all the stars up close. And you know what they look like? Handing the candle to Hal, revealing a lantern ring on his finger, he tells Hal that they look like a bunch of candles, 
all light moving around in the dark, like they're looking for something. Cut back to the present, the mother box asks Hal if he will be their new god. Hal then says to the mother box, you want a god? My name is Hal Jordan and my father cut open the sky. The mother box then pings, creating a change in Hal Jordan as Batman across the galaxy says that Hal Jordan understands now what they have to do with their power. While Hal Jordan changes from sight to light to the very light itself, until finally becoming the god of light itself, becoming essentially omnipotent, able to see past, present, and future, transcending all natural laws of the universe. With Hal becoming a god, he asks the mother box if he can repair Oa and return everything back to what it was to which the mother box says to just will it into existence. Thus, Hal says ping and returns everything back to the way it was before the parademon attack. Realizing that everything is now right, he can make everything right too. Hal realizes that now being the god of light means that Hal is everywhere all at once, seeing every star like candles. But upon saying candles, he comes to the realization that he was the man in the church ever so long ago, listening to his younger self. Closing the loop, Hal Jordan, the God of Light, says what his younger self heard all the way back in the past in order for Hal to never give up and to find the willpower to keep going, so later to become a Green Lantern. With Hal afterwards using his power to see his father's plane crash from so long ago, thinking that now with his godlike power, he can make it so his father never died in the crash if only he manipulated the event slightly. But before deciding to change his father's fate, he remembers what he said to himself in the past, to trust the will of God, and to ultimately love that will. So Hal doesn't save his father, and instead asks if the mother box can destroy itself, to which the mother box says that he need only say the word. So Hal Jordan says ping, and Hal reappears on Oa, no longer the god of light, running a scan to find that everyone and everything is okay, no more demons and no more gods. With Oa safe, Hal Jordan sets a course for Gotham City after seeing what Batman would do on the Mobius chair, being the god of light, and to try and stop him, flying so fast he could tear the pretty sky in two, ending the story. I hope y'all enjoyed this story as much as I did myself, and never lose that will to keep moving forward no matter what life throws at you, because good things will always find their way to you in the end. But with that, I hope y'all have an amazing day, week, month, and year, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side. I also found out that while making this video, there's an entire subreddit and community that just pinned Ben 10 against Green Lantern, and I wholeheartedly believe that Ben 10 could wipe the floor with not only Green Lantern, but like every single character in the DC Universe, just with his Omnitrix alone. There's just no way, like, that he can't. But, yeah. Alright, that's gonna be it. Um, I'm gonna stretch this out to eight minutes. Every rose has its thorn. Just like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Every rose has its thorn.